Welcome back to another episode of Gaming with Charlie. Today I will be teaching you how to do mathematical proofs, goofy and mathematical proofs, such as proof by induction, proof by contradiction, etc. So, let's start with the definition of an implication. Well, what is, what is an implication? This is an example of an implication. If you see him on a live crewmate, he is an imposter. Bruh. So, this is an implication. If A, then B. Ooh. If you see him on a live crewmate, he is an imposter. Yeah. So let's make a truth table to demonstrate what this implication means. Now we have a truth table right here that gives you all of the possible scenarios. So either he did, either you saw him on a live crewmate, or you did not see him on a live crewmate. Ooh. Either he is an imposter or he is not. Let's look at uh, these uh, four possible scenarios and which ones are possible. Oh. Is it possible that you saw him on a live crewmate and he is the imposter? Obviously yes, that's obviously possible. Now is it possible that you saw him on a live crewmate but he is not the imposter? That is not possible. Not possible at all. Because if you see him on a live crewmate, he is an imposter. So this is not possible. Now, is it possible that you did not see him on a live crewmate, but he is still the imposter? Yeah, obviously. And is it possible that he did not do either? Also possible. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I know. This is a big brain. Super nerdy. some valid and invalid conclusions. So this is the implication, this is a universal truth. We know that if I see him on a live crewmate, he is an imposter. Let's say I saw him on a live crewmate, so I conclude he is an imposter. Is this valid? If you said yes, is this valid? You saw him on a live crewmate like this, is he the imposter? Is this a valid conclusion? Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Now, let's say you did not see him on a live crewmate, so you say he is not the imposter. Is this valid? If you said yes, that is wrong. This is not a valid conclusion. Just because you did not see him on a live crewmate doesn't mean he is not the imposter. Oh my now, is this a valid claim? He is an imposter. So let's say the game has ended and now you know who, and like you all know who was the imposter and, and who was the you just said that you saw him on a live crewmate because he is an imposter. Nope, that is not valid. And lastly, if you know he isn't, if, if you all found out he isn't an imposter, could you conclude you did not see him on a live crewmate? This is valid. Yeah, um, so these two claims minus 69,420 social credit. Now, the first and the fourth conclusions are called modus ponens and modus tonens respectively. Remember these, these are important. No, yeah, no, God, I feel like please, I'm no, arguing with no. a brick wall. I don't know why, but like, what? So let me give you an example that's more relevant in math. If it's a square, it's a rectangle. This is a this is a universal truth. This implication is true. If it's a square, it's a rectangle. So let's take a look at some conclusions. Um now, could you say it's a square, so it's a rectangle? Yes, this is a valid claim. If you know it's a square, then you know it's a rectangle. Could you say it is not a square, so it is not a rectangle? No, this is not valid. Just because it's not a square doesn't mean it's not a rectangle. As you can see from this example, this is a shape that is not a square, but it's still a rectangle. Could you say it's a rectangle, so it's a square? No, also not valid. Just because it's a rectangle doesn't mean it's a square. But you can say it's not a rectangle, so it's not a square. If it's not a rectangle, then it cannot be a square. Because if it were a square, then it would also be a rectangle. Oh you might be confused God. as to what I mean, so let me give you three possible scenarios. Given this implication, if it's a square, it's a rectangle, there are three possible scenarios. Either it is a square and it's also a rectangle, or it is not a square but it is still a rectangle, or it is not a square and it's also not a rectangle. So let me tell you why the first and fourth uh, conclusions are valid. Bruh. If you say it's a square so it's a rectangle, well if you know it's a square, then that gives that crosses out these two possibilities. So you don't have this possibility and you don't have this. You only have the first possibility, so it must be a rectangle. If you say it's not a rectangle, then that crosses out these two possibilities. Because if it's not a rectangle, then the only possibility is it's not a square. So basically, in an implication, you have A implies B, square implies rectangle. 
And anything is possible except the scenario where A is true and B is not true. So if Bruh. B is not true, then you know that A is not true. Big brain time. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Alright, now let's uh, do some direct proofs and the contrapositive proofs. Let's say we were to prove that A implies B. That if A were true, then B would also be true. So let's prove that if P is even, then 2 times P is even. Ooh. Now I will go over two types of direct proofs. Uh, proof by contrapositive and direct like proof by implication. So if you say that if A is true, then B is true, that is equivalent to proving if B is a false, then A is a false. Oh my so God. therefore, doing a contrapositive implication is the same as the direct proof. So P equals 2K, Bruh. therefore, so the direct proof would be this. If P is even, then P can be written as 2 times an integer, K being any integer. And then 2 times P would be equal to 2 times uh, that integer. So therefore, 2 times P must also be even. Now, direct proof by contrapositive says that we're gonna assume that B is a false, and we're gonna find that A is also false because B is a false. Because, like, we we're trying to find if B is a false, then A is a false. Which is the same as saying if A is true, then B is true. So we assume 2 times P is not even, so therefore it's odd. And 2 times P is odd, therefore 2 times P can be written as 2K plus 1. And then if we divide the 2 by both sides, we find that P cannot be even either. So QED, we have proven it. And QED is basically saying like, Aight, I'm ahead out. Yay! Yeah, you use a brain. I know. <laughs> now let's go over proof by contradiction. Yeah. SpongeBob. Oh so proof God. by contradiction is similar to proof by contrapositive, <laughs> except you're trying to prove a statement is false by creating an implication that leads to something false. So let me tell you what it is. How do you prove that A is a false? You assume that A is true, and then you show that if A is true, then B would be true, and then you find that B is not true, so therefore A is not true. This is a very, very powerful proof, because if you assume A is true, and then you find that if A is true, then B must be true, but B is not true, then A must be not true. Also, I used the wrong then. It's supposed to be T-H-E-N, not T-H-A-N. So, let's go. Very sus, huh? So let me give you an example of a Giga Chad. No, let me give you an example of a proof by contradiction. Prove that the square root of 2 is irrational by oh contradiction. My God. So, first, to prove that the square root of 2 is not rational, we would first assume that the square root of 2 is rational, Ooh. and then we would try to find a way to f make something not true come out of that, so we can prove that the square root of 2 is not rational. So, for a number to be rational, it means you can express it as a ratio of two integers. A rational number is a number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. So let's assume square root of 2 equals a ratio of two integers, p and q. p and q being integers. Now if we square both sides, we get 2 equals p squared over q squared. Let's multiply q squared to both sides and we get 2q squared equals p squared. Look at what we have now. So what is p squared? p squared must be even. You find that out? Yeah, p squared must be even. Why must p squared be even? Because p squared is equivalent to 2 times an integer. So 2 times an integer must be even. Now since p squared is even, that means p must also be even. So since p must also be even, that means p can be rewritten as 2k, 2 times k. And p squared can be rewritten as 2 times k squared, which is equal to 4k squared. And k being an integer. Alright, now we can take this 2q squared equals p squared and rewrite that as 2q squared equals 4k squared. Divide 2 from both sides and we find out that q squared is equal to 2k squared. Since k is an integer, k squared is an integer and the 2 times k squared must be even. So therefore q squared must also be even because q squared can be written as 2 times an integer. Since q squared is even, q must also be even. Therefore q can be written as 2n. Bruh. And n being any integer, like an integer. So now we can arrive at a contradiction. As you can see, we have a contradiction now. Well, it's not that obvious yet, so let's continue. So p can be rewritten as 2 times an integer. q can also be rewritten as 2 times an integer. 
So let's rewrite p over q as 2k over 2n. So we have square root of 2 equals 2k over 2n. What now? Well, we can simplify this in the denominator. But look at this. So we have this fraction, we can simplify this fraction, what can we do now? We can square both sides to get 2 equals k squared over n squared, and do this whole process again and simplify this fraction again. And then we can do it again and simplify the fraction again. We can repeat this process over and over and over and over. We can keep simplifying this fraction an infinite number of times. Number of times. Something's wrong, man. I can feel it. What is wrong? Well... We can't simplify a rational fraction an infinite number of times. Bruh. There must be a point in which we can no longer simplify a fraction. But as you can see in this scenario, we can simplify this fraction an infinite number of times. So, what is this? Well, if the square root of 2 were rational, then we'd have a fraction that can be simplified an infinite number of times and still be a fraction of two integers. Now, the thing is, we cannot have a fraction that can be simplified an infinite number of times and still be a fraction of two integers. Therefore, the square root of 2 is not rational. If A were true, then B would be true. B is not true, so A is not true. There, QED. We have proven that the square root of 2 is not rational. However, we will now go over my favorite proof, mathematical proof by induction. This is my absolute favorite proof, because it's like knocking over dominoes. Once you knock over dominoes, you knock over all of the dominoes. Oh the mathematical proof God. by induction is how you prove a, a mathematical theorem or identity by induction. So let me tell you what it means. So let's say we want to prove a statement. Let's call the statement A. We want to prove that statement A is true for all integers. Now we are going to show that if A is true for some value, it must be true for that value plus 1. We want that. We want to show that if A is true for some value, it must be true for the next value. And then we find that A is true for some value. So basically, let me tell you this. Here's how it works. We find out that A is true for 1. So, if A is true for some value, it must be true for that value plus 1. Since A is true for 1, it must be true for 2. And since A is true for 2, it must be true for 2 plus 1, which is 3. Since it is true for 3, it must be true for 3 plus 1, which is 4. Since it is true for 4, it must be true for the next value, and so on. And now we've proven that it is true for every value. This is a super powerful proof. Got it. So let's go over something we're going to prove. Prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to plus n is equal to 2 squared plus n over 2. So this is the statement we're going to call the statement A. Prove that it is true for all positive integers. How do we prove this? Well, first we want to show that if A is true for some integer, then it must be true for that integer plus 1. So we're going to assume that it is true for some x. Now we're going to show that it is true for the next value of x. So, we might be confused, like where do we go here? There are so many steps we can take, how do we prove it? What, what, what? Well, let's uh, simplify the right hand side and the left hand side. We have 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to plus x and then plus x plus 1. In the right hand side we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus x plus 1 over 2. Now, for the right hand side we can, we can rewrite this as equal to x squared plus x over 2 and 2x plus 1 plus 1 over 2. We can subtract this from both sides of this equation. So from this equation we subtract 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way to 2 plus x from the left hand side and we subtract x squared plus x over 2 from the right hand side and we end up getting just this x plus 1 plus e equals the 2x plus 2 and that is true x plus 1 equals x plus 1. So we have a proven, we have a shown that if this statement is true for some value of x, then it must be true for the next value of x. Now we just gotta show that it is true for x equals 1, otherwise it would be a little sus. So, show that this is true for x equals 1. So when x equals 1, this is equal to 1 squared plus 1 over 2, yada yada yada, it is true. So since this is true for, for when n equals 1, in sense, if it's true for some value of n, it must be true for the next value. We have proven that it is true for all positive integers. QED. Alright, now let's say we want to prove by mathematical induction something slightly harder to prove. 
Now this time we're not trying to prove it for all integers, uh, positive integers. We're trying to prove it for all values of uh, for all integers greater than four. Assume n squared is less than two to the n for some n greater than four. Show that the next n is also true. Like for the next value of n, it's also true. So n plus one squared is less than two to the n plus one. How do we show it? Yeah, we don't really know. Well, we do know. Oh All right. So my God. now we want to show that n squared plus two n plus one, which is the left hand side expanded, is less than two to the one times two to the n. Remember that two to the one times two to the n is equal to two to the n plus one. <laughs> so let's take the right hand side. That is equivalent to two times two to the n, which is greater than two times n squared, because Bruh. we know that we were assuming that two to the n is greater than n squared. So. 2, 2, 2 times 2 to the n is greater than 2 to the n squared. And that is greater than n squared plus 2n plus 1. <gasps> and the reason why is because if we subtract n squared here and here, we get it. n squared is greater than 2n plus 1. In the sense that we're assuming that n is greater than or equal to 5, then this must be true. Um, what do we do here? Well, now we're just gonna find that this is true for some value of n greater than 4. And we're gonna choose n equals 5, so we're gonna find that 5 squared is less than 5. <laughs> 2 to the 5, and now we've proven it through mathematical induction. And this is how we prove it. So, yeah, if you don't understand, then rewatch, I guess. I don't really know. But, anyways, this is it for this video. If you've made it to the end of this video, this means that you've just become smarter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more goofy and math. Hit the bell icon to never miss another upload, and hit the like button to show your appreciation, and leave a comment telling me what you learned. But anyways, this has been Charlie, until next time, take care.